fall out. Smoke. And I've looked over. Oh, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. We'll get to the promised land. We'll get to the promised land. Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up. As I turned around quickly, and the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. Killing any potential threat, any potential messiah. That Dr. King left his room 306 at the Lorraine Hotel just before dinner to get some air. He walked over to the railing at this spot, and noticing some friends below, he leaned over and began to speak with them. Police say 205 feet away, in a window in a flop house, the assassin waited. Killing any potential threat, any potential messiah. And Rob, some call that deadly raid the massacre on Monroe Street. Black Panther leaders Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed. Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed. Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed. Brothers and sisters, we are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrews. Let's go! All praises be to the most high God. I share it. From my, I was opportune to meet my grandparents mm -hmm. whom from childhood yes. had always led us to understand that we are one of the lost tribes of Israel okay. so for my grandmother right now look at these yeah I'm telling you I got to show y'all a, a picture speaks a thousand words just look for yourself and this is the creme de la creme. All praises be to the Most High, y'all. Everything we've been through, y'all, the Most High is going to retribute it on all the nations that have had a hand in the oppression of his apple, the apple of his eye, his chosen people, his beloved, his fervent lover, his only begotten. They're going to have their part in the lake of fire. You see them tormented by some kind of creature. I don't even know what that even is, y'all. Judgment in chains. He that led into captivity shall go into captivity. All praise to the Most High God. It says, thou that dwells in the clefts of the rock. Whoa, I know a lot of y'all know about the Caucasus Mountains. Let's just let the word speak. Let's go to verse four. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle, and though you set thy nest among the stars. And ethnicity is a cult. Um, and unfortunately, we were right. Jews will die! Replace us! Jews will die! Replace us! What's up, Zion Daddy? See, this is your favorite dreaded Israelite, the man, the myth, and the legend. Y'all check this out, humble by y'all. Y'all gotta check that couple out on Etsy. Look at that. Hebrew Israelite law keepers. Oh my goodness, the purple and gold with the purple fringes let's go ahead and show y'all this y'all support that family y'all i'm telling y'all them fringes y'all are not gonna reg uh, regret it um humble by y'all on etsy y'all check out their um store y'all check out humble by y'all on etsy because them things is dope them things is muy fuego it makes keeping our heritage our culture fun and that kind of thing but y'all we got to get into this we're gonna deal with this i kind of waited before i went into these things so family i did not want to deal with this the whole buffalo massacre i did not want to deal with it until i started doing my research i'm um, looking at a bunch of different news outlets to kind of collect what actually went on but basically what happened was you have this young 18 year old i think his name is um i can't gary pendon or, or something i'm gonna put the um cnn article or cnn uh clip in the video so y'all can kind of see what happened but basically 18 year old white kid drives over 200 miles over three hours y'all to get to this predominantly black area black town goes into a predominantly black supermarket right on our side of town goes in opens fire military style got the armor vest and all that stuff so y'all we're going to deal with this thing and this is going to be about replacement theology now a lot of the research that i'm going to go into on this video y'all get these books and this one y'all I'm kind of running a little late, so if I see, seem like I'm kind of rushed, y'all, I'm trying to get this out because I don't want to be buku long, um, and I do want to have more of the news on here in case y'all haven't really seen what happened. So we're going to be drawn from hybrid hate. Now, hybrid hate. Now, Dr. Tudor Parfit, the Harvard scholar, the Harvard University Press, 
uh, Black Jews of Africa and the Americas. He also has this book, which is his most recent work, Hybrid Hate, where he connects historically, right? Y'all check this out. He connects anti-Semitism with anti-Black. And he even argues that at one point, it was one entity. Now, when you look at Hitler and a lot of these Nazi researchers during the time of the Holocaust, a lot of them said that the Jews had black soil. And I showed y'all that uh, the Nazis book. Let me see if I have that. And a lot of y'all say that they kind of took this off of Amazon. This is where Hitler says, he also says in Mein Kampf, but I do not have a copy. A uh, shout out to that um, sister that brought that up. But in Mein Kampf, he also talks about uh, the Negroes being the true Jews. And in this book, he talks about the Negro strain, which is predominant in the ancient Israelites. And some people believe that's why he persecuted the Ish people because of their central banking and they were not the true people. So in the uh, hybrid hate book by Dr. Tudor Parfit, he deals with the idea that at one point, anti-black and anti-Shemite was the same thing. It was said that the Jews had black blood, right? It was not based on their pigmentation, but it was based on the history of knowing the ancient Israelites. Y'all, when you go back in time prior to the 1948, I showed y'all a Harvard study that links our DNA to ancient Natufia, ancient Israel, um, the proto-Israelite type, the Canaanite strain, right? Before the modern Jewish people that are in the land today, the ancient bones suggest sub-Saharan African origin, or Negro, or Yaya Negro. But not just that, if you scroll down to Israel underscore Natufia, Natufia is the name for ancient Israel before the 1948. Now the Harvard study already lets you know that before the 1948, we have DNA evidence of ancient sub-Saharan Negro remains. That means that the Israelites there today if they are legitimate Israelites, they are going to be linked to these sub-Saharan Negro remains that predate the 1948 people. That means before the so-called white Jewish phenomena, there were black Negro remains, ancient black Israelites. The Negroes that have been sold to the four corners of the earth, these Sephardic Northern Kingdom, Moors, Ephraimite Israelites that have been scattered due to the Deuteronomy 28 and us not keeping our covenant, which the Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, made with the children of Israel to keep our heritage. He said, if y'all don't love y'all heritage, if you're not proud of who you are, I'ma take it and give it to another nation. And all that idolatry that y'all trying to get down with, I'ma take that and I'ma give it to y'all. And y'all gonna be forced to worship wood, uh, Christianity, stone, the Kaaba stone of Islam, and you're gonna lose your history. So the scholars know Harvard, archaeology, even Dr. Tudor Parfit know that anti-Semitism's its origins was anti-black. This is how a black person cannot be an anti-Semite when you look at Nick Cannon and that kind of thing. So you're, the reason I'm going through this history about anti-Semitism, anti-black, is because there is a group of white people, y'all hear what I'm saying? There is a group of neo-Nazis that know this history, so when they say white soil or white power, this whole replacement theology is based on the fact that they believe that the Jews would lead this uprising of black people and all what they call oriental people taking over or replacing the white race. Now we're gonna look at- um, And unfortunately we were right. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Now we're gonna look at this 18 year old and how he had a 180 page memorandum talking about how the white race was a dying breed. Now y'all, this goes back to the legends of the Jews. Now, now I told y'all that it was prophesied to Rebecca that she would have two worlds in her womb, that one of those sons, and she had twins in her belly, that one of those sons would give birth to Solomon who would build the temple and rule the earth after a family model of I am because we are, Ubuntu, that if Aunt Sally had Kool-Aid and Big Mama had sugar, the whole village drank a glass. But also her other twin son, Esau, would give birth to Vespasian who would destroy the temple, rule the earth and sin in this critical race theory based driven society. So when we look at the claim of these white supremacists that they fear that we're gonna take over, understand it was prophesied to Rebecca that these two worlds could not exist at the same time and that they would clash, family. They would clash and Esau would be that last ruling empire, that Babylonian whore of Babylon, America, 10 toes of the statue of Daniel, which are the 10 founding NATO European countries 
that would rule at the very end that last Babylonian element of America, NATO, Esau ruling the earth and that Esau would be the end of the earth. That fourth beast, the eagle that comes out of the sea in Ezra, Esau would be the end of the earth and Jacob would be the beginning of the world to come. That's the kingdom. That's when our Messiah regathers us, takes us back to Zion and we rule under Christ for a thousand years, y'all. And then after that, the great white throne judgment, the nations are judged and the new heaven and new earth starting with our people begins. And that's a whole deep concept, y'all. But basically, our people are destined to have next. After the European power construct, our people got next. So I'm gonna show y'all a clip that goes through what was going on in Buffalo this past weekend. And the news article is gonna show you that this guy was a white supremacist neo-Nazi, feared that the Jews will replace them. Why? When white people say they fear the Jews are gonna replace them, they proceed to target black people. They know the history, I'm telling y'all. And I'm gonna show y'all that clip. Let's check it out. 10 people were killed when a gunman opened fire. This was at a supermarket in a largely black neighborhood in Buffalo. I seen the guy go in, army style, bent over, just shooting at people, and I heard him shooting at people, and then I saw three people laying down. Officials say that Peyton Gendron, a white 18-year-old man, was wearing body armor and military-style clothing when he pulled up yesterday at the Topps Friendly Market and began shooting. He picked that spot specifically for its demographics, according to officials. They say he drove for more than 200 miles away to carry out the attack in an area that had a significant black population. He was very heavily armed. He had tactical gear. He had a tactical helmet on. He had a camera that he was live streaming what he was doing. The suspect was immediately arraigned on first degree murder charges and more charges are expected to follow. Federal agencies are now investigating the shooting as a potential hate crime and a case of racially motivated domestic terrorism. Now, authorities say 11 of the 13 people shot by this white suspect were black. They're reviewing a 180-page manifesto reportedly written by the shooter where he describes his perceptions about the dwindling size of the white population. CNN's Polo Sandoval is with us from Buffalo right now. Uh, Polo, what else have you learned about this shooting thus far? And certainly some disturbing details that investigators are basically pouring over in that manifesto that you just mentioned. As for the neighborhood itself, Christy and Boris, the air is certainly heavy with sorrow as this community will be waking up as they continue to mourn the loss of many of their community members. That yellow tape that you see still surrounding the grocery store this morning, it will likely be up for some time, just given the broad nature of this investigation, a very deep nature of this investigation as authorities were uh, very quickly announced that they will be handling this, uh, at least at the federal level, as racially motivated, uh, motivated uh, violence, uh, violent extremism. In fact, just a few hours after that heavily armed and uh, armor-wearing suspect uh, allegedly pulled up to this grocery store, the federal authorities were very quick to say that he was fueled by hate as he got out of this vehicle and it very methodically began to shoot people in this parking lot before he went inside. At the end, 13 people were shot, 10 of them killed, 11 of the victims were black. Um, so that's certainly something that, that, that just paints a clear picture of, of, of what happened here and, and also speaks to the apparent motivation that investigators are working with right now. In terms of where he came from, you're talking about a three-hour drive southeast of here, close to the Pennsylvania border. I want you to hear directly from uh, Erie County Sheriff John Garcia as he uh, tries to, to just describe how this investigation is being handled up to this point. This was pure evil. It was straight up racially motivated hate crime from somebody outside of our community, outside of the city of Good Neighbors, as the mayor said, coming into our community and trying to inflict that evil upon us. That suspect already charged with first-degree murder uh, yesterday afternoon, but uh, as you mentioned a little while ago, those charges will likely begin to add up with more charges expected, not to mention that federal component of this investigation. But there are there's so much evidence to pour over. There's the 180-page manifesto that investigators are looking into that they believe may have been written by that suspect and had been posted online just days before the shooting itself, uh, and also witness statements. And then, of course, what he could potentially tell investigators as well 
as we uh, today will seek to learn more about the people, the families affected, including a security guard that tried to actually shoot the suspect. In fact, actually managed to land, uh, managed to land around, but because the, su the suspect was wearing that body armor, that round was ineffective, uh, and that's when the suspect, police say, turned his attention on that security guard uh, and then shot and killed him. Uh, in terms of what we also expect will be more about what state authorities will be doing. I had an opportunity to speak briefly with Attorney General Letitia James yesterday who says among uh, many different things that they'll be reviewing will be social media platforms including some of these live streaming platforms uh, including the one that was used to live stream a portion of that attack. Of course that company has spoken out more saying that they are devastated and they took down that live stream only minutes after the violence began. Hello, Sandoval. We appreciate all of the details. Thank you so much. I want to go to CNN White House reporter Jasmine Wright. Jasmine, always good to see you. I know President Biden has been briefed on this shooting, obviously. What is the response from the White House? Well, President Biden is mourning the victims of this tragic shooting, but he's also calling for action after he was briefed on Saturday. In a statement released late last night, he said that more needs to be learned about the motivations of this shooting, making way really for a thorough investigation. And he also said, Christine Boris, one thing is clear, and I want to read you this part. He said, a racially motivated hate crime is abhorrent to the very fabric of this nation. Any act of domestic terrorism, including an act of perpetrated in the name of a repugnant white nationalist ideology is antithetical to everything we stand for in America. Now, the president added that we must do everything in our power to end the hate-fueled domestic terrorism. And in this statement released last night, he also thanked uh, first responders and other law, uh, uh, excuse me, law enforcement officials. Now, we will see the president today leaving his home here in Wilmington, heading to Washington, D.C., where he is expected to attend the National Law Enforcement Office Memorial, where he and the First Lady will lay a wreath and also give remarks. Now, I think we can expect the President to tap into that role of consoler in chief, really returning to that as this nation mourns this tragic event. Christy, Boris. Jasmine Wright, traveling with the President in Wilmington, Delaware. Thank you so much. Let's get straight to some expert analysis now with CNN National Security Analyst Juliet Kayyem. Juliet, always great to have you. Uh, always unfortunate that it, it's often under these circumstances. Um, CNN has independently obtained this shooter's alleged writings, much of it lifted directly from uh, the darkest corners of the internet. The shooter describing himself as a white supremacist, as an anti-Semite, exposing that uh, fringe conspiracy theory that white people are being systematically replaced in this country. It's very similar to other far-right terrorists that we've seen before. This strikes me as a copycat type attack. Is that a fair assessment? It is, and I think, it's, it, I think the manifesto exposes, I think the limitations of the way we tend to think about these kinds of attacks as sort of lone wolf, what can we learn about him, what motivated him. I think what we see is that there's an entire apparatus of uh, you know, connected tissue connecting these cases, connecting this hate, uh, and supporting essentially the efforts that we saw the hunt that we saw on Saturday. It, the manifesto itself is is not rambling. We shouldn't think of these people as crazy. It's it's actually just absorbing uh, the, 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 the language of hate that we hear in the public space, that we hear in the media space, and in particular, as you note, the white replacement uh, theory of, of, of racism. And, that it, and, and it matters because a white replacement theory is based on a, a belief uh, that the pie is limited, the American pie is limited, and that the existence of the other, in this case, African Americans, but we've seen it with Hispanic Americans in, in the rampage in Texas, the existence of them threatens my ability as the white man to be able to exist in America, and therefore it justifies violence. In other words, it is a, it is not just racism, it is a violent racism because you have to rid yourself of these people, and this is the, the 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 motivation that is leading to what we call you know, violent extremism. This isn't just mere extremism. It is violent extremism because it's justified in their theory of I have to protect my piece of the pie. And that kind of thinking is echoed often, even by some of the most popular yes. hosts on on cable news. Yes. 
and other similar terrorists, uh, people that we uh, know shot up a mosque in New Zealand, uh, a church in, in South Carolina. Uh, the shooter in his own writing seems to acknowledge that he was radicalized online, just an 18-year-old kid. Walk us through that process of radicalization. Are some people more susceptible to this sort of thing than others? Well, certainly, then one is well, some people are more susceptible to it because it confirms maybe beliefs that they've had or the beliefs that they've been raised in. And then the way the algorithm algorithms work on social media, the way that uh, uh, we get information is that what if we like something, more of that information will come to us over time, uh, over time so that you're just inundated with only that lane of how to view things. So that is essentially what is happening now why there's lots of people receiving this though so why why did he become the one who who took out a gun but that's the that's the sort of brilliance i hate to say it of what's happening in terms of white supremacy in terms of hatred in this country you can hear political leaders media leaders right they are they are espousing the same thing but they're doing it in a way that is relatively generic and so they have plausible deniability they didn't know this guy they didn't tell him to do it but what they are doing is giving him a network of support. They're giving him, as I as I wrote yesterday, the herd. He's not a lone wolf. He's he has his herd, and then why particularly him? Uh, we will find out over time. But that's basically how the radicalization works. They find comfort in the numbers, and they're supported by leaders. I mean, they, they don't view themselves as aberrations or crazy. They are they are watching leaders mimic this language. I'm telling y'all, this stuff is powerful. Now, it's mighty strange that last week I showed y'all in the last video about the Third Temple. Y'all looked at it. Y'all check that uh, Third Temple video out. But basically, the Jewish people are preparing for their Messiah. They are preparing to crown their anti-Messiah. It's blonde hair, blue-eyed, armorless, um, Russian, Khazarian prince that's getting ready to take the world scene. Y'all mark my words that JB told y'all by the Spirit of the Most High Yah. It is coming. And because that is coming, we know that our salvation is coming. We know that our Messiah, yes, Yorubah, but not Ephraim, is at hand. That now, now nobody's going to know how this gets down. Even the Son of Man, Yeshua, said he does not know how. Nobody knows except for the Father how this is going to play out. How our salvation is going to fully die. Y'all catch that. This is shrouded in mystery, but what we do know is the markers that we can watch. We can look at those ish people. We know they're not the real people, but when Satan is preparing for war, it's because he's imitating the fact that he knows the Most High Yah is returning to regather Zion and take us back to our birthright, Africa, the land of promise, and our people are getting ready to be elevated, y'all. We are getting ready to be restored, and the nations that don't want to get down are going to get left or destroyed. I'm telling you, with thermonuclear fire, destruction, those chariots, we already know. So, family, as y'all saw, this brother was calculated. He had planned this out when he found out that his people were a dying breed, that white people are, are he fears that their race is going to be taken over by these black Jews, right? I'm telling you. He sees the Jewish people as the gateway of a kingdom to come. This is historically astute. I showed y'all Dr. Tudor Parfit makes that connection between anti-Semitism and modern um, anti-black sentiment, or anti-black sentiment, right? Because they know our people are linked. Black Jews of Africa, y'all check that out. Uh, the Imo Yoquayim is going into detail, the Yoruba Ephraimites, the Ashanti, the Igbo, and the Black Jews of Africa by Edith Bruder. It's so much Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard, Library of Congress about the Negro slave that was deaf and dumb but could write Hebrew. It's so much that the scholars have these, these court records, they have these ancient um, family genetic DNA trees that they burn the courthouse to hide our history. But we know by the spirit of the Most High Yah who we are because the power of the prophecies of the living Yah was able to resuscitate the dry bones. So now family, I'm going to prove to y'all that this whole replacement theology that this young 18 year old believed in, y'all understand, that this whole theology has been sold, this seed has been sold by Trump and a lot of major uh, far right conservative grand old party Republicans that also hold this fear. They are afraid of our people rising up, the Israelites, and the epitome of that is the black Jews or the black Israelites 
being restored and becoming that world without end that they fear, that Planet of the Apes scenario. Now let's check out that clip. Law enforcement officials say this alleged shooter posted a 180 page manifesto online just days before the attack and it draws on and references replacement theory at least 28 times. That is a racist conspiracy theory that basically in Western countries like the United States and some countries in Europe, some type of racial and religious group of external minorities from somewhere else in the world will quote replace the rightful white supremacist majority of those nations. Now at one time this was considered quote unquote fringe. But again, when you hear what Mr. Crump asks about how we in America will deal with this, we're not talking about red and blue here. We're not talking about the size of the government. We're not talking about policy. We are talking about a growing push to get people thinking like this so they might act like this, which is why we believe we've tried to put together some important reporting on this important problem tonight. Because this is being amplified and pushed by some very influential people in America and specifically on the right. For example, Fox News host Tucker Carlson. People count up this kind of stuff, so whether you watch him or not, the fact is that the people who do and who track this note that he has made a reference or variation to this type of hateful conspiracy theory, this replacement thing, over 400 times since 2016. There are some nights where it seems just like the core point of his show. In political terms, this policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy America. The strategy is to change the demographics of the country. You disempower the people who live here. You take their votes away. The Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate. What Tucker does there has a little partisan spin. You heard that at the end. It talks about one party doing this. But make no mistake, in case someone is narrow-minded enough to only look at this through partisan lenses, as we've documented on this program before, where this came from, out of hateful corners of Europe and where this is going is really not about parties. It is about trying to have a race war. Now this alleged gunman screen invokes the race replacement theory. Now I want to say on our MSNBC coverage from across the weekend through tonight, there is a careful goal not to indiscriminately echo or disseminate every piece of this, every claim or lie inside this conspiracy theory. To show the exact evidence, though, of the link to this very serious mass murder this weekend, I'm now going to quote a portion of this suspect's claims for you, including his, his admission, his admission that this exact racist worldview is what got him thinking about committing violence. Quote, I learned that the white race is dying out, that blacks are disproportionately killing whites, we are doomed by high rates of immigration, he says, again there, at the end of that quote. And he later writes, quote, my race was doomed, and it was there that I started to think about committing an attack, end quote. His words. Now, as a matter of reporting or law, there is not a stipulation here drawing a causal link between this act and this violence and any individual person's rhetoric. Indeed, this kind of investigation can be quite complex and take a long time when you go beyond what happened that day to what may or may not have caused it, who is linked to it, or in legal terms, if there's any other direct actors, whether there was some sort of attempted conspiracy. That is not what we are asserting here, and I say that in all deliberate care. At the same time, we note there are ways that this very screed from this very alleged killer echo exactly what has been pushed out here across parts of the European and American right wing and across parts of Fox News and Tucker Carlson's show. How precisely is diversity our strength? Since you've made this our new national motto, please be specific as you explain it. Can you think, for example, of other institutions such as, I don't know, marriage or military units in which the less people have in common, the more cohesive they are? Do you get along better with your neighbors or your co-workers if you can't understand each other or share no common values? There is that overlap. As for Fox's position on this, they are not directly commenting. They did 
tell the Washington Post that there are examples they pointed to where Tucker Carlson has spoken out against violence. And because he has a platform, he may speak out on it, of course, this week. Now, this weekend, another person has drawn on this conspiracy theory in these words, this time committing a mass murder. But it's not the first time that these ideas, which many of which are constitutionally protected speech, you can say these things, but it's not the first time that they've moved towards actions that are not protected because they involve menacing or violence. In 2017, we saw the neo-Nazis directly quoting this same thing, replacement theory, as they marched in Charlottesville. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! You will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Part of the writings of this conspiracy theory have the idea that in America or these Western states, Jews will help foreign minorities, quote unquote, take over. And Europe doesn't have a great record on these issues if you look at the far right and the hate speech and what hate speech can lead to. Now, others have trafficked in this and meant it. There was Brenton Tarrant. In March of 2019, he attacked two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, killing 51 people, pushing white supremacy, posting about replacement theory. And what you see here is how that can drive interest. This is international Google data, which shows a spike in searches for replacement theory around that incident. And in August 2019, you have a spike when another shooter, Patrick Crusuis, attacked that Walmart in El Paso. 23 people died there. He posted online complaining or warning of what he viewed a Hispanic invasion of Texas. Then you have April 2021. That's the biggest spike to date. That's Google data. And you see the person pushing at that time through media was Tucker Carlson. He talked about a demographic replacement on air. The New York Times reports on this as well. And you see that massive spike in interest today. Well, searches for replacement theory after some spiking down are back up again after this alleged gunman has been linked to the conspiracy theory. What you see on your screen is something that may be less fringe in the numerical sense as it is embraced by some who want to talk about it, which as I mentioned in the United States is allowed and embraced by others who want to use it as a pretext or explanation or incitement of terrible violence and terrorism. We predicted that Charlottesville would be the largest gathering of white supremacists in over a decade. Um, and unfortunately, we were right. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! ADL and the Center on Extremism are dedicated to providing actionable information, analysis, and expertise to law enforcement around the country. to share this with you guys to let you know they know that the end is coming now in that clip i showed y'all they talked about how uh we saw the young uh israelite queen she was talking about how biden wanted to let everybody know that we don't stand for racism we don't stand for bigotry and this is antithetical to the fabric of this country y'all check out critical race theory this is prophecy that these two worlds, Jacob and Esau, could not exist in the same estate. It could not happen. That for one to be on top, for the European power construct, uh, NATO and the European countries to rule, Jacob or the African Israelites had to be at the bottom. This is prophecy. This is integral to the very fabric of this country. That our people have to go through these things, have to be the scapegoat. Let me explain it. When you look at the founding of this country, this is why Hannah, uh, Nicole Hannah Jones in the 1619 Project argues that 1619 is the beginning of this country. She argues that this should be the Independence Day, if you will, because of how integral racism is to this country. We looked at white flight, how for every option or, or attempt to integrate our people, it creates an equal and opposite negative reaction because this country is founded on a foundational rock of institutional scapegoating, i.e. racism, toward the chosen people of the Most High God, the children of Israel. So this country can only exist 
because of this. So family, this country can only exist by our people being at the bottom, the prison industries, the way these big corporations make their money off the back of our people being one of the highest consuming spender countries. They say that the uh, black dollar, it takes only 24 hours for it to turn around. White people can save, they can keep money. Our people are the scapegoat demographic. There has to be, in this European age of Esau, there has to be a scapegoat people, which is our people. So y'all understand that the nations know what time it is. The whole third temple thing, the ish people preparing for their Messiah, this whole race war climate that's going on, this whole race war climate is because they know what is going on, y'all. They know that their, their age of rulership is coming to an end, family. So y'all stay prayed up. We are in some turbulent times. I'm going to do some follow-ups going into the end time prophecy again. I'm going to go back through those lessons of the mark of the beast, the image of the beast, the antichrist, uh, the two witnesses I did not touch, um, the millennial reign, all of this because we are in the hour family. We got to stay in the spirit. We got to stay unified and teach this truth and this history. Y'all share these videos uh, to everybody that y'all know about who we are as a people, the curses of Deuteronomy 28. All of the history that verifies the supplemental information, because we use the, the word of the Most High God as the foundation, but all of this history that the Most High has blessed us with to know who we are. So y'all with that peace, love, blessings, and Israelite power, the age to come, the gods of this earth family, we got next. And I love you all with the love of the Messiah. Peace, love, blessings, shalom. All praises.